Hey YouTube, welcome back, Leo Potts, so you know what it is guys, thanks for tuning in. Guys, right off the bat, thank you very much. I reached my goal of a thousand subscribers before 2015 and that's because of you guys. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so guys. Today's video is gonna be on my 125 gallon tank guys. Here I am gonna be bringing you back into the fish room and I'm gonna be showing you what I do on uh, what I'm gonna say here, maybe once a month. I do this once a month, it's a water change on my 125 gallon tank. I prepared here 15 gallons of water. It's RO water prepared for my RO unit in my reservoir. I have uh, my mixing pump right here. You can see that I just submerge this in the water and it's a pretty uh, powerful pump that I use strictly for mixing and transferring water. So what I prepared here is 15 gallons of RO water mixed with some salt already from the night before. I'm just taking a look at it now with you guys the next day and I'm taking a look at the salinity level and uh, just double checking that it's in the right area that I want it to be. Using this tool here, the refractometer, I can see the salt level content of the water, the salinity. By the looks of it, I need to add a little bit more salt. We'll wait another few more minutes and wait for the salt to dissolve and fully mix and we'll test it again. While we wait for that to mix up, next what we want to do here is go to my tank uh, switches here that control all my equipment and we're going to be turning off the skimmer, the protein skimmer, as well as the return pump. And I do that via these switches here that I ran when we first set up the tank for all the equipment for easy maintenance and access. Okay, now that the protein skimmer is off as well as the return pump for the whole system, you're gonna notice here that the water level in the, the main display tank is gonna lower about an inch or two. In regards to the water level dropping once I turned off my main uh, return pump, I wanted to definitely point this out to you guys on how and why I would like my water changes to be a little bit quicker than a normal water change. Um, for this reason right here guys, uh, you can see that in my tank I have some great coral growth of uh, assorted corals, mostly Montipora, that's been growing along my back glass and on my overflow uh, boxes as well. So therefore, when I turn off the return pump, you can see that some of these corals here are exposed to the air and they're out of the water. This being the reason why I want to make the water change as fast as possible. And uh, again, I have not drained any water yet. This is just simply from me just returning or turning off the power to the return pump. So now looking at from the front of the tank, you can see that I have the WP40 wave maker still going and that's what's creating the waves and flow in the tank. And again, you can see that the corals here, they are exposed to uh, the air and out of the water. So let's get cracking on this and uh, make sure that the salt's all mixed and uh, start siphoning out some water and we'll get some water back in as soon as possible. So to make sure that these corals are not out of the water for a longer period of the time than needed. Okay, so before we continue, what I want to do here is take the refractometer to my main display tank here. And what I'm going to do is take a water sample test of the salinity. And by the looks of it, uh, we usually try to aim between 1.025 to 1.026, approximately in that area. And you can see here that it is a little bit low. I need to raise it up another uh, couple of notches there to get it into the right zone. So this is my main display tank here, which is stating that it is lower than normal. Let's take a look at our salt water batch mix and let's see what the salinity level is reading now with us adding a little bit more salt a few minutes ago. Ideally in the perfect world, what you want to do is test your main display tank for the salt level with the salinity refractometer and then from there match that up with the new salt water that you're going to be changing into your tank. In this case, since my main display tank is a little bit lower than average where I would like it to be, my salt batch, I'm going to mix it a little bit more salty or a little bit more salinity. So slowly within the next month or two or the next few weeks it's gonna I'm gonna gradually do some more water changes and then from there I can gradually bring the salt level back up of my main display tank where I want it to be you don't want to all of a sudden um, just spike up the salinity level you want to do this gradually if that's the case Next what I'm going to do here is turn off the WP40 wave makers, the two that I have on either side of my tank. I'm going to put them into the feed mode which will last approximately 10 minutes. 
By putting these wave makers into the feed mode, all it does is basically shut off the pump for approximately 10 minutes, either for feed or for an instance like this where you're doing maintenance or water change to the tank. Just keep in mind uh, that you'll see here in the video that the wave makers do turn on as it does take a little bit more than 10 minutes for me to do what I need to do. And uh, you'll catch the wave makers in action there doing a little bit of splashing around. So I've already started to siphon out some of the water here out of the 125 gallon for the water change and um, it might look a little bit different than what you're used to normally you would start siphoning some water out and you would do a nice uh, gravel and uh, sand bed clean and uh, rinse and siphon as well but in this case um, i don't normally do that at this point Okay, now that we got the 15 gallons of water already siphoned out of the display tank, let's have a quick peek to see on how much these corals are actually exposed out of the water into the air. Okay, now that we got the 15 gallons of the salt water siphoned out out of the 125 gallon salt water reef tank, we're ready to pump back in the new salt water that we mixed earlier. One tip and trick here that I wanted to point out here is that when I pump the new water back inside my system, I pump the water into my sump instead of into my display tank and the reason for that is I feel that when I pump the new water inside my sump it dilutes the water with the water that's in my sump before it reaches back inside the display tank when I turn my pump back on. So it's just another little way of diluting the water that you're adding in to the system into your sump instead of directly into the display tank. Well, with that being said, you can see that the water level here in my sump is starting to climb, which means that I need to turn back on my return pump to start pushing water back inside my main display tank. Well guys, if you're interested to know a little bit more on how the plumbing works for this system, stay tuned and let me know as well I can make a video for you guys in the near future designated just on the plumbing of this aquarium. Well guys there you have it the 15 gallon water change has now been complete we took out the 15 gallons of water we just added in the new 15 gallons of salted water and you can see that the tank is a little bit cloudy and should definitely clear up within a few hours or until the next day. Well guys that looks like a wrap for the maintenance on the 125 gallon saltwater coral reef fish tank thanks very much for tuning in thanks for subscribing if you haven't subscribed go ahead and do so like share comment let me know what you guys think guys and uh, we'll see you till next time.